Keep that same energy when it's crunch time. That's what the second high performance habit is according to High Performance Habits by Brendan Burchard. Activation energy, sustainability, emotional cost. These terms on their own may seem to have zero correlation, but when it comes to performance, they go hand in hand. This second habit is on generating the energy necessary when it comes to getting your mission done. We all like to kick the Nike slogan around, just do it. But realistically, there is an expense to doing anything. It's the reason behind the snooze button. It costs too much to get the day started right now. Get back to me in 5 to 10 minutes to see if I can afford it. Don't talk to me before I've had my coffee. I'm getting too old for this. I'm too tired. It's too early. It's too late. All these phrases mean is, right now, I don't feel I have what it takes to tackle these obstacles. In this chapter, Bertrand helps identify the actions to take to get the fuel to get going. Generating energy. My interpretation of Bertrand's approach to generating energy is to have an individual concentrate on three parts of self, mind, spirit, and body. This chapter is divided into applying practices to each of these elements in order to create the energy needed to perform well. The practices for mind and spirit can be implemented as each task surfaces, while the practice for the body is recommended to be under constant vigilance. Matter cannot be created or destroyed. If you allow me to get philosophical, that would mean that each person, as an individual conscience, has been at it non-stop. Whatever it may be, our lives have been a constant trudge through thoughts, actions, and consequences for eternity. That was exhausting even to consider. Imagine that being the case even as you are able to compartmentalize existence by days, weeks, months, and years, each measure of time continually piles on from whatever our history holds. Without having to do any additional research, just consider our memory. We have good ones and bad ones from as early as we can remember. Imagine all of existence's memory bearing down on us. There is bound to be a trailing effect. I can't say if Bertrand thought of it to the extent I just explained, but I can infer that this concept at some level is how he proposed the practice for the mind, release tension, set intention. I interpret that Bertrand would like us to take a step back or pause from all our baggage before our next venture. I like the concept. This section talks about how we put on many different hats throughout our day, and if we aren't careful, the effects of an event can carry over to our next objective. An example could be as follows. You wake up and become a nagging parent, waking the kids up for school. We commute to work and become another person impeding a smooth ride for everyone on the road. We stop and get a coffee and become a customer with expectations of great customer service. We get to work and could become the co-worker, partner, and supervisor, all before returning home to then become a loving spouse and parent. Although a simple day like this can go in so many different ways. The kids can get up speedily because they still like school, or they can drag their feet because it's a test day. The morning commute goes without a hitch, or there's additional work to be done on the Palmetto. That's from a Miami folk. So on and so forth. Each piece of your day can be different, resulting into a different version of you at the next event. You might not be the cheeriest co-worker after you spilled your coffee on yourself, after hitting a pothole, to avoid crashing into someone texting and driving. The possibilities are endless, but Bertrand's practice of releasing tension and setting intention is like grabbing a Snickers bar. Before starting a new task, he advises you to stop and meditate on the version of yourself needed to get the task done. Forget the giddy feeling from your new date, forget that they gave you the wrong order for lunch. You need to write a report and you need to be focused on that. You're getting home after a rough day at work. It's nobody's fault at home. Take a break and be who you need to be at home. I understand this as a practice to consciously shift your mindset instead of working through all the buildup throughout the day and it serves a wonderful purpose. Bring the joy. After setting your mind to focus on the best version of yourself for your upcoming task, it can help to visualize the best possible outcome. If you come with your A-game, it should lead to great results. This is what I gather from this subsection on generating energy. To be honest, this section of the book is more anecdotal than anything, so I will focus on my takeaway. Bertrand goes on to describe key behaviors that high performers practice, allowing them to bring their best. I will discuss how it allows you to perform highly. 
We all know what it's like to be eager to start a new project willingly. I'm referring to a task that you do out of sheer volition, not because a boss asked for volunteers or you decided it's time to clean your house. Hopefully you have a hobby or want to learn a skill and you were amped to do so. This section advises you to get yourself on that level of anticipation when you begin any task. In my case, I like to write raps, and sometimes I catch myself thinking, Ooh, the speed is fire. I'm gonna kill this. It's gonna make some waves. Granted, the results may not culminate in the way expected, but for those moments when I start, I can see a great process and a great result, and sometimes the results are great. This section also discusses the use of triggers in order to assist with flipping the switch to what I call go mode. My favorite of the triggers is the door frame trigger. In essence, before you walk through any door or entrance into a different situation, imagine the best scenario playing out to help you with what you have to do to make it happen. Bertrand describes others that you can read for yourself, but the aim of each is to remind you to be at the emotional state attributed to the positive results you expect. Optimize health. How can you have energy when you feel like death? This simple yet immensely powerful topic of health is the third key to generating energy by Bertrand. Again, it's simple and common knowledge. Eat right, get exercise, and get rest. The book goes into detail as to what the misconceptions are on these concepts and readily debunks them. This section struck a chord with me because there was a segment on the importance of sleep, even though one could feel as if they are working fine with just a few hours. Never being satisfied, at one point, I found myself working 96 hours per week with three jobs. Needless to say, they individually didn't take me where I wanted to be financially, but I am impatient and decided to do what I could at that time. Throughout most of my life, I've worked two jobs or balanced my schedule with school, and it has cost me. I've done okay with that level of work, but I wasn't really ever present anywhere. I yawned in school, I yawned at work, I crashed as I fell asleep at the wheel in traffic. Most of those days were a fog and they are really hard to remember. What I can remember is that overworking myself may have done more harm than good. I was too tired to be at my best anywhere, too tired to exercise, too tired to meal prep, and continually shortchanging myself on sleep. Everything was just getting done. My excessive working actually made me look lazy and irresponsible to different parties involved who did not see the whole picture. Sleep is the only way the body can rejuvenate. It sounds like an achievement to be the first one in and the last one out, but if it's not necessary, don't do it. At a minimum, the body needs time to process what happened throughout the day, and if the day never ends, it's ultimately a waste. Exercise is maintenance for the body. It regulates metrics of all sorts within the body that if left unchecked can cause illness or even death. There's muscular atrophy, clogged arteries, heart problems, and a whole list of problems, all because you're too busy working to keep yourself in working condition. Nutrition is the fuel that allows everything to happen. Hitting up the fast food joint because you don't have the time to make a meal for yourself is hardly a viable solution in the long run. To be a well-oiled machine, you need the good stuff to provide quality output. This is yet another trifecta where each element ties in with the others. Mastering the balance among all will help you be in a state where the body isn't clunking about in order to get things done, but instead you can start to take stride. Charge complete. The thing I like most about high performance habits is how basic the breakdown can be. Habits are actions repeated and you are your habits. Habits of generating energy are easily implemented and probably one of the best things you can do. It's impossible to perform at peak levels without energy, but the entrepreneurial culture has been corrupted by the grind mentality. This chapter highlights how taking the time to be in tip-top shape, both physically and mentally, will help you produce at the level wanted. There isn't any one of those things that you can't start today, and now will be forever better than later if you're up to it.